Welcome to another unbagging video from theplayersaid.com. I'm Grant. Today I'm taking a look at the contents of the polybag game Patton's Vanguard, The Battle of Aracourt, 1944. The game is designed by Mike Ranella and is from Revolution Games. This is the first game from Revolution Games that I've owned. It's a nice looking game. I think the complexity is fairly uh, mid-level and it's a an operational level World War II game about the namesake Patton. So I went ahead and removed it from the bag. This is something I really like when publishers of these polybag games give you these slightly oversized bags. It makes it so much easier to get the thing out of the out of the bag without tearing the bag up and or damaging the contents. Uh, but nice looking cover using a historic uh, picture of Patton there in his nice uh, leather jacket with his ivory handled revolver. Quite a story behind Patton. Obviously, as we all know, uh, he thought very highly of his ability and he wasn't necessarily wrong, but his uh, philosophy was attack, attack, attack. Never stop, never let up, always attack, be on the offensive. And that's great for a tank commander. You don't want a tank sitting still a, an immobile target. So definitely a great tank commander. Uh, wanted to attack, attack, attack. Um, he was actually involved in World War I when tanks were obviously new. And I think learned a lot of lessons there and used those to great effect in World War II. Um, I really like Patton. Uh, obviously he... Uh, did some things that none of us really like, but he is a very interesting character, to say the least. So, Patton's Vanguard is a small uh, game. Let's look here at the rule book. I'm showing you here the rule book. Um, I'm looking for the play, and I'm not finding them. Well, I'm sure I'll come across them uh, here in just a moment. But yeah, very, very simple looking game. Has some nice looking counters. This is kind of a summary. This page here acts as the cover, but also as a summary of the different unit types, some of the markers that are included. Uh, here you can see obviously victory out of supply, bridge markers, etc. Here's a look at the unit information. I like the silhouettes of the tanks used. Um, you know, pretty interesting looking game. There is infantry. There are engineers because there is some bridge building and replacement. There's also some air power. There's flak, uh, artillery, and then obviously tanks. So neat looking game. It is an impulse based system. Um, and there's an advantage marker there. I'm trying to figure out what the advantage marker is, but we'll we'll look at that uh, look at that later. Rules don't look too over the top. This is a 16-page rule book, and I believe the last couple of pages are, yes, they're optional rules. Those optional rules included are the bridge rules, historical figure death, uh, bridge construction, and then there are some optional units that you can include. There's a glossary, and then I believe the very last, the last page is a couple of scenarios. Yeah, first scenario... Yeah, so not not a lot of rules. This is a pretty simple game. Looks fairly fairly basic. And when we look at the map, you're going to see that the map is a little bit different. It's not traditional hex encounter. Uh, it is more area movement, not even point to point, but it's area movement. Uh, it it does involve. And here I, I I will show you this. They went ahead and made an edit there, which I appreciate them making the edit because that will really mess up a game. And then obviously they'll uh, redo that in the next printing. My guess is I could probably find the rules somewhere on Board Game Geek, download them, and reprint uh, out a fresh version that doesn't have that. But simple looking uh, looking rules there. Now we come to the good part, the counters. I always like looking at counters. Each game game company has different look and type of counters. These appear to be very clean, simple counters. There's not a not a lot of information. You've got a unit identification, 
And then you've got their power, defense, and movement. So not a lot. They do use NATO symbols, except for the tanks, which use a silhouette of the different types. Uh, here you have German uh, markers. And uh, here are some more Germans with... These are a lot of control markers. Let's pop one of these tanks out and see how it comes out. Very nice thick counters, I'll say. Focused in on that. They need to be clipped. Obviously, I'll, I'll enjoy clipping those. They do have a reduced side. I don't know that all, nope, looks like all units have a reduced side. But there's a look at an American tank unit. But yeah, they, they came out of the sprues pretty easily. Not a lot of tearing. And they're very thick. These are very nice and thick counters. Let's go ahead and look over at the reduced side there. You can see some bridges that are blown. And then you have these construction markers as your engineers are trying to prepare or repair those. So backs of those units, simple looking counters, but once again, simple is not bad. The information you need and move on. So there's a look at the counters. Now we've got a look, let me move those counters in that. Uh, here's the map. It's actually a really nice looking map. It's 11 by 17, a little larger than 11 by 17, I feel. This will look great under Plexi. It's gonna look really good uh, once you get that under Plexi. But it, it's, it's a pretty big map, to be honest. Good size map for a small game. Here's what I was talking about with the area or, or area movement. It's not really point to point, but there are areas that you're moving to. Looks like certain areas are victory cities or victory areas that you must control. And that's probably laid out in the scenarios. Um, simple administrative stuff on the right side of the map. You have your victory point track, your impulse point tracks, game turn at the top. You have some of the historical leader counters, uh, different boxes for the advantage and the air bombardment markers, and then a really cool eliminated units box here that has a really cool tank uh, sitting there. But yeah, nice looking game. Um, pretty simple. It, it is a, it's an impulse system. So you're gonna get a certain amount of actions and then you're going to take those uh, throughout the game. So looking forward to this. I, I think it's it's fairly small scale. So my guess is this game's going to play in an hour and a half or less. Um, but I could be wrong in that. But definitely one that I'm looking forward to trying. Uh, looking to uh, get it out and and play it because I I like operational level games. I also like smaller war games because once again you can you can play them to conclusion fairly quickly and then get them right back out to the table and play him again. So that's Patton's Vanguard, the Battle of Aircourt, 1944 from, from Revolution Games. I need to get this one to the table soon so I can get a review out the door uh, so you can get a feel for this. This did come out, I believe, I wanna say mid, mid year in 2017. So it's been out for about seven or eight months, maybe nine months, so. Definitely want to get into it and uh, get it to the table. I'll let you know what we think. If you enjoy the video, please go ahead and like. If you enjoy our channel, please subscribe. And check out our written blog at theplayersaid.com for more in-depth information, including reviews, strategy articles, action after-action reports, and designer interviews, among other things. Uh, and let us know what you think in the comments. Thanks. I've been Grant for The Player's Aid.